This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number 230 of the Action Movie Guys podcast. I'm your host, Nate, and that is my co-host, Alex Figueroa. And this week, we're going to be starting our martial arts month for February. Now, a little bit different. Normally, we do Black History Month related black. But this month, we're like, nah, let's switch it up. You know what? Let's go totally different topic. Martial arts. And this is going to be a movie from 2005. A movie I saw in the movie theater two times back in two, when I was 18 years old in 2005. This is a movie called The Protector. Starring my main man, Tony Ja. Alex, this was a first time watch for you, correct? Yeah, I never, I mean, I heard of Tony Ja, but I never seen like whatever movie made him my, mainstream to everybody. Yeah. Like his household so, name. So there yeah. was two. There was Ong Bak, the Thai warrior. That was his first movie. And then this was like his second movie. But mm. this one, I think, put him on the map even more than that one. So kind of the one that blew him up a little bit. Yeah, Like I said, I saw this at the theater twice when I was younger. I have it on Blu-ray. I, have, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I remember everything. Now, before we review it and go into the scores even, let me ask you a question. Which version of the movie did you watch? Just the regular 83-minute U.S. version of it or the 110-minute Thai cut. So I brought this digitally. So I'm one hour and 23 minutes. So the 83 minute. Okay. So yeah. you watched the regular, that's like the US version, the regular one that most people have seen. That's the one I have seen like 10 times. This is going to be a good review because I'm going to give you some, a little bit more details that happens with the international cut. Alex watched the straight up regular one that most people have seen. Very lean, very mean. 83 minutes. That yeah. being said, let's give you some Rotten Tomato score. So this one is similar, like I said, to X-Men Origins Wolverine. 20% gap, roughly, but both of them a bit higher. Audi uh, critic score with this one's a 53%. Not amazing, but audience score is a 76%. So mm. th this is one of those movies that I remember when it came out. A lot of people were talking about it. Like, did you see The Protector? And it didn't make a ton of money, but it was like one of those. Remember, I'm trying to think of a recent movie. John Wick kind of had this effect where like people didn't see it in the theater because they thought it had a weird name and stuff. And yeah. then when it came out on video and then all of a sudden everybody bought the Blu-rays and the DVDs and the, this was one of those everybody started renting it watching it at it's home like the word of mouth effect just yes starts to the word of mouth down the, yeah because i saw it in the theater twice and it was empty both times i remember so anything about those scores now that you've seen the movie find it surprising no no i, I no honestly no nah. I kind of figured the, the, the critics, the, the whole tone of the movie, what the movie's actually about, mm -hmm. kind of see that the critics doesn't really care about it much, no. to be really honest with you. I said, what's up with these elephants? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. All right. Well, that being said, I'm excited to get your perspective. I obviously mm. have my own takes on everything. Again, I'll give any a little bit when it gets a storyline. That's the only real difference as far as the two cuts. So I'll expand a little bit there. But lead character, calm. Khan, whatever his name is, they don't really, they, they say it so fast. Um, this is, of course, Tony, I just call him Tony Jaw all the time. What did you think? Well, uh, so, well, it's really good. For, I saw it for, this is the first time me watching. So, Tony Jaw's character is pretty much, he, he grew up with elephants. Like, it's funny <laughs> when you really think about, like, if you really think yeah. about it, because when I was watching this, when I, when I was on vacation, I was trying to watch this movie, but it was kind of wrong because you're on vacation, and yeah. then you're going to fall asleep because you're so tired. Mm -hmm. But when I started seeing I was like, this shit is really about elephants? Like, <laughs> I, and then I, when I watched it, rewatched it at home, I started to read up on the, the beginning text where it talks about how you are protector of the elephants and the ancestry and Begin it goes their on culture. history. Yeah. yeah. So, the, and then you're Mutai. That's why he's a, he's a known fighter from all. Multi. So, mm -hmm. Mutai. But anyway, his character is pretty cool. He grew up as a kid with this one elephant, and his name is Corn. And <laughs> I remember that one of the. I remember one Corn of the, with a K. Yeah. Yes, Corn. Yeah, I remember yeah, one of the elephants was named Corn, and I it's forgot the little the one. His like his elephant is named Corn. His Corn. But what was the big one? The, the um, one that he grew up with. Uh, poor Yai. <laughs> yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. Poor, yeah. So like, mm -hmm. he grew up with this one with the husk. I always mm -hmm. remember with the husk, and you see them growing. It's like some Jungle Book shit, bro. They come fu, and it, you see him. They're growing up together, but his demeanor is very loyal. He's loyal to his dad. His dad mm -hmm. got shot. I said, "Oh man, dudes are gonna get their ass beat." You get to see. We will talk about that in action sequences, <laughs> but you see everything unfold, and he's a protector of elephants. Like literally, this movie, and I know you're gonna laugh so hard. This movie's John Wick. 
with elephants. Before, before John Wick. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a great comp. It's, yeah. yeah. It's John Wick with elephants. They took mm-hmm. the man's elephant. And, and we'll talk about storyline because there's some shit that happens with this elephant. <laughs> I felt so bad, dude. My eyes yeah. got a little bit watery. But I just got to say is that in terms of Tony, Tony Jaa did a great job from what I saw. And again, the movie was dubbed in English plus the native language of what the film was in. So he was really good in that. The fighting sequences, he was, let me just say, He's like Jackie Chang of whatever he is, bro. On on steroids. Anyway, he's a it's a five. It's a five. I'll let you okay. do it. It's a five. Yeah, you're you know what? I love it. I'm glad you made the comparison because I was gonna say the same thing. When I was watching it, I was like, where have I seen a movie where something happens to someone's pet and then he gets really <laughs> pissed off and goes after them? Oh yes, I know. John Wick. And everybody, you know, the funny thing is, oh, well, I'll save it for storyline. Anyway, calm. He's cool. He's cool. He is, like you said, he is a he lives in nature. You know, I love the beginning. So the version you watch, the beginning part's a little shorter. It's about 10 minutes. And then when I watch, it's about 20 minutes with like the elephants and the markets and all that kind of stuff. So it's like even more, mm. there's even more backstory of him with the elephants. But the f- most hilarious part is when the two elephants walk into the woods and when they come back, there's a baby. And you know what they did in those woods? Like they went and, was that oh, in I your saw that scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. When, yeah, the, yeah. when he goes, dad, dad. And the dad goes, let them. And they all start laughing. Yeah, they, they they leave, bone. And then when they come back, the baby comes out. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, no, it's in both versions, but like it's yeah. longer in the other one. It always cracks me up. Anyway, he is, uh, yeah, these people that they basically raise elephants yeah, and they really. live with them in nature, and then they present them to like the royalty in this country, and then they have it as like the royal elephant or whatever. So he, the, what he protects is the elephant pretty much and uh there's poachers of course because you get into like the animal there's these group that are trying to steal them and that's where the storyline will kick in more but as far as tony ja goes i mean 100 listen he is 100 percent pure like badassery in this movie like yeah. there's no other way to put it i i always have him at a four i never forget this because every time i watch this movie i remember i always have him at a four until the part where that guy stabs him and then he goes into like berserker rage mode and just starts breaking everybody's bones. Cause he's like a four, like, okay, it's pretty thin, right? Like all he wants to do is get his elephant and that's it. He has no girlfriends. He got no, no friends, no nothing. But that, that moment where he gets stabbed and it's like kind of slow motion. And then all of a sudden he goes nuts. Five. I got to give him a five. And this is not, don't get me wrong. I'm not giving him an equal five of like other characters that are like very deeply written with great backstories. He's not that. But when you're talking about a martial arts movie, you're not really going to get those kind of scripts. And and you know what I mean? So yeah. we have to judge it in the world of a martial arts film. And uh, this character is amazing. He is great. And Tony Ja, he does the he has the stunt work of like a Jackie Chan. He does all his own stunts, no stunt doubles. So he he has that ability to like do all this crazy stuff, jump off of high things, you know, crawl through little spaces. When he runs up like a wall, it's insane. He could do all this stuff, but his fighting ability is way more hard hitting than anything Jackie Chan ever did because he's doing the Muay Thai. So a lot of knees, elbow, like everything looks like it hurts. And they filmed it in a way where a lot of them, they take a lot of hits. If you notice, they put a lot of like, they'll use like powder to show like when an impact comes and you see the powder like kind of pop off. So yeah, I love it. I give him a five as well. Okay, main villain. Now it's this, uh, the main villain we're scoring is this lady. No, I scored the lady. Uh, Madam Rose is her name. Johnny's like her main henchman. I gave, I gave her a three. She was good. She was not in, well, in the movie she's there here and there, but at the end she does get to fight him. So she has a whip and and they're fighting each other. I can't say much because like, honestly, Johnny, he's after Johnny the whole time because Johnny's group is to have stole the elephants and he goes on a rampage fighting a massive people and breaking necks and stuff to get these elephants. But at the end, he does find this one woman and they have a pretty good fight. And then they go to the helicopter pad on top of the, the, the building and they have a pretty cool fight. Honestly, she was OK. She was like a normal martial arts villain type character. But one thing you did say in during the, the lead character is we're not judging these guys by acting or nothing, because on, honestly, I don't speak we don't speak these that language to see how like so but 
in terms of ability of how believable and how fighting ability, because it is a martial artist movie, she did great. Now, I have not, she did not look like she had a stunt double either. So it looked like she went toe to toe with Tony Jaw and they learned and rehearsed these fighting sequences. So with that, I gave it a three. I thought she was good. I was like, you know what? She, she was pretty good for her role. Yeah. So I'm going to blow your mind with this. I'm going to blow your mind with this part. Oh, was that his so girlfriend? There, nope. nope. <laughs> like there's, his so there's, there's something I didn't know about this character. Because like I said, I have only ever seen the version that you watched ever. Okay. Like that's the one I know. And in that movie, honestly, it goes pretty much from like action scene to action scene to action scene. Like there's yeah. there's like little like two minutes of like some plot. And then it goes. This one I watched has way more like story. It's like almost 30 minutes longer. So it has like a lot more story. That character. OK. In the store, in the movie is actually a man. It's like a like a transgender character. OK, and there's a scene in a boardroom meeting earlier where she's talking with her uncle and he makes this reference about this soup, about this earthworm and how the earthworm is neither a man nor a woman. And then they cut to her and then they do it. And then upon further research, the actor is also a transgender. So it was a man who is a woman. I'm guessing does the mark. You're right. No, there's no, it's like, it's her that's doing all the fighting. She has a cool whip. I like that part where he goes to jump yeah. on the dude and she just has that whip and boom, hits him in slow motion. So there is a other layer to it in the longer version that makes it a little bit more kind of interesting. That being said, I'm right there with you. I still think it's just an okay villain. It makes sense when she poisons the two kids. Cause remember she was like, Oh, you lost that air. And then, Oh, you lost that air. And then it's la She's the last of yeah, the last okay. of the. But 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 she was she wasn't chosen to lead because of this whole thing about she was a man and then she turned into a woman and so the father is like doesn't you know she doesn't feel like she the the father's like you can't have it because you were my son and you're yeah. not so there's that whole element that's cut out of that ver <laughs> of that version wow. okay yeah I still gave her the same score as you I gave her a three I, I I think she's you know she's not in it a lot and at the end of the day she's someone who's trying to take over like this crime syndicate that is in Australia. Australia. That being said, Johnny as a henchman, I love Johnny. Johnny's yeah, great. Bro, Johnny can fight. We'll get more into it in the action, but Johnny was cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I still give it a three, but at least it's a little more of a fleshed out character in the international version. Okay, I already know what you're going to give this, but let's go ahead and let's talk. But this is what we're here for. Let's talk about some yeah. action. Well, this movie is the epitome of what we do here in the Action Movie Guys podcast. This is a five plus plus to the plus. Ooh. This is, mm -hmm. this is, oh man. This action is so good. First of all, cameras don't cut. They have a one shot of my man going up a building to the top floor of a whatever the hell it is, a, a porching area where, where rich people buy exotic animals and they eat it. Well, mm -hmm. it got me really tight. I, you know what's crazy about this movie is there's real shit like that. Oh, yeah. So, like, it, what's crazy about it is is that if you're one of those animal lovers and you're into this stuff, you're going to get really emotional tied into the film because a mm -hmm. lot of the things between the elephants and you get to find out. We'll talk about all that stuff in, in storyline. But when you get to this one part of the movie. Tony Ja goes from the first floor and the camera stays on him and no cuts. The camera's no cuts. Mm -hmm. It stays on him from the first floor all the way up to like the sixth floor or seventh floor, but the cameras keep going. He throws someone through the wall. The camera will adjust itself by walking around him or going around another wall to make it look really cinematic. Like, they do some fantastic camera work here in this, with, with, the, with the fighting. That is one of my favorite scenes is the one shot. i never seen a one shot mark the large movie. I don't even think till now. This is the first ever I think I've seen one like this. And yeah. you can see he's winded by like the fifth floor. Oh, he's He dead. looks so tired. Yeah. yeah, he looks so tired. But it was awesome. You got scenes of my man flying from like, I mean, this dude's do some Superman shit with his <laughs> knees. He comes from like, I don't know where. He lands with knees everywhere. It's awesome. Again, the fight, the multi that he does is so awesome. But there's a lot of snapping necks, bro, that he does. And the one scene, I call it the the snap, crackle, and pop scene. Because mm -hmm. he's crack he's snapping everyone's, like, After bones. After he's stabbed. He, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah he gets that stabbed and he starts breaking yeah. everyone's arms and legs. When he takes Corn's bell and he wraps it and it was over. Oh, he whips the dude's asses. Yeah. Yes. Like I, I think the the move like this movie is why I love the martial arts films. 
Because it's like, again, you don't know what the hell they're talking about the language. You really don't know if the script that the subtitles or the voiceover that they're telling you is the actual movie script. It just could be whatever, you know. But the fighting is so good. Like it is so good. And then there's of course the, the rumble in the boxing that I call when he goes into the thing and he's fighting skateboarders and rollerbladers yeah, and yeah, 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 bicycle yeah. guys. And <laughs> like though that scene was okay. Like I was like, that's okay. The movie goes up a notch when he finds starts to go into the whole exotic room there and then of course at the end of the movie where he fights the guy from is that the guy from Mad Max uh, yeah he goes, he was in I Mad- have a brother he, he, he was in mask or something he was in Mad Max he was in Troy remember yeah, at the yeah, beginning yeah. and Brad Pitt stabs him and he dies really quick he was a yeah. wrestler he wrestled in Wrestlemania 19 oh. with The Undertaker for a second mm. he was a wrestler for about six months and then WWE cut him Nathan Jones is his name he's freaking mm. huge he's massive yeah I, that's why I remember I was like oh crap but that scene at the end is actually really good too but yeah i'll let you go more but other than that this is the best hands down the one of the best action movies martial arts that we covered oh and then the scene that he's fighting the guy with the capoeira in the fire eddie gordo from, from tekken <laughs> it looks like he fights yeah. like eddie gordo with the with the capoeira he keeps clapping. but i give it a yeah i give it a five though i give it a five go ahead you take it away ten. i give it a five. ten this is gonna give this action a ten uh this is this is yeah. this is the movie that like i always tell people i still know a million people who haven't seen this and and I'm always like, you got to watch this movie. Like, listen, there's issues with it. Sure. Whatever. I, if you literally fast forward, all, if you tell someone, hey, this movie's about a guy who they steal his elephant and he's trying to get it back. Just say that. And then say, fast forward any part they're talking and just go to the action scenes. You will love it. You, listen, the first fight, and I'm pretty sure we did a show a while back on our live show where we talked about our favorite action scenes and the one take was on my list. That scene alone would get this movie a five. Because you've not seen anything like it. The camera, first of all, the camera, the cameramen, just as they're, they're literally running upstairs with the with the with the camera, and they do pass it off. It's like multiple. It took multiple people to shoot it. Okay, Tony Ja has to do all this stuff nonstop, going up. It's about five or six minutes long, and he goes up. I think five like sets yeah. of stairs. It, not only is he running upstairs, he's fighting on each floor. Then not only is he fighting, he's doing freaking splits up above the door, like like in a folding into a little position and then coming down and he throwing people off the thing they one of them they show land on the floor yeah the other one they just show him get launched it's worth the price of watching the whole movie just for that part but it don't stop there that scene you were talking about with the uh with the rollerbladers and all that it is stupid in the sense of why are they like this why are they on dirt bikes and rollerblades and skateboards however that is probably the best scene if you want to see what this guy can do as a stunt person. Because there's a part where he is like, uh, someone's coming after him. He goes on the floor, splits under a, a little gate. And then the camera never cuts, by the way. The, the, the camera work in this movie is amazing. Um, yeah. And then it just kind of turns. And he's doing all this. Like, he's escaping. He runs through a train car, jumps through the window, slides out another window, climbs on top, jumps up. Like, it's nuts. He runs and jumps, does a handstand against a wall. Like, like, I would probably die if I tried that. There's so many moments that you're just like, how is this guy doing this when he runs up the, the two different walls side to side and he goes up like, this guy's like a real life Batman, pr- pretty much. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for the stunt work, that scene is amazing. For the fighting, everything else. The best fights, three. And then we'll move on. Johnny in the restaurant. Uh, I love that fight when Johnny comes up and does that flying kick, kicks him into the door. It looks like he kicked him uh, super hard. He goes flying into this thing, right? But then my man Tony Ja gets pissed off and he does that thing where he's just looking. He's not even looking at him. He's like looking at the floor and he's fighting sideways while the dude is like doing all. It's some like super Bruce Lee, like awesome. Matrix shit. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, but live. You know what I mean? There's no CGI. There's no cuts. There's no edits. It's just, it's incredible. I love that fight. The Eddie Gordo guy, the the capoeira fight. It's cool. The aesthetics are great. Like the room is on fire, but there's also water on the floor. And that style of fighting with the leg sweeps and the kicking, like it's beautiful. And then that last part where he fights the 9,000 guys in the room and he starts breaking all their legs. But when the big beefy guys come in, oh baby, then you're like, how's he going to beat these guys? When that guy throws the elephant, that's my favorite scene of the whole movie, by the way, when he just picks up corn. (laughs) 
<laughs> he fucked the shit out of that <laughs> bro. Elephant. That is my favorite. Every time that happens, I rewind it like three times. And I just laugh. Like I know I'm not supposed to laugh, but that that one man picked up this like two thousand pound elephant and just <laughs> sw- chucks him yeah. like through a window. It's amazing. Yeah. And then he figures out a way. Like how can I beat these guys? And then he remembers. Got to cut the tendons. And he starts slicing. Oh and yeah. Shaking. Like yeah, that, that was. He- yeah. Was, yeah, he's just like, it's so funny. <laughs> it's a it's a, a million out of five, the action scene. It's probably action wise one of my top five like favorite movies, period. I just think it's yeah. is nonstop and it's awesome. Okay, let's come back down to earth a little bit. Storyline. Three. Mm. It's a good storyline. Very it's a very good storyline. It's a very emotional. And uh, this is where we were gonna allude to. When you find out that they killed the main elephant. And you see bones and Mm -hmm. you see the horn. I got tight. And I was just like, oh, these motherfuckers got to go. Like, Mm -hmm. and and I thought they killed the little one too. But I was like, not really, because I remember like when you're hunting for them, they want the damn horns. So I kind of figured, I was like, the little one's going to be somewhere. But I told my wife, I said, yo, they actually killed his. And I was like, oh, man. I was really emotionally grabbed there. And the second time I was emotionally grabbed, when you find out that where he went, when he does the one shot and you find out that that's where they eat exotic animals i thought they ate the elephants and i was like oh shoot corn became corn like <laughs> i was like oh, i was like oh, corn crap. became corn yeah he became corn like i was just like i was like man that kind of sucks but you know what we live in a world that i bet there is real stuff like this that happens but the like, again the storyline is very i can't say very john cuz this came out for, way first than john wick but we all know john wick for the puppy but it kind of have the eerie the eerie similar Similarities between the two, whereas you know the puppy died and to motivate John Wick to do what he has to do and to to get him out of that retirement of assassin world. Whereas he gets to lose the, the big elephant, but he still got corn at the mm-hmm. end of the day. So very similar, eerie sim- uh, similar between the two. But it's a very it's a very basic, not basic story, but it's a very well told story. I think that's what I was trying to say. Not basic. It was just very well told. But again, it's nothing. Great grand crazy but it was told very well for me to give it a three i mean it was actually really good it, it, i don't think it was great or perfect but i think the fact that the with the porching and the exotic eating i, I think that's to me that's what elevated it to a to a good i was like this is i mean the fighting alone i mean you could just go yeah this is great ever but fighting is fighting story is story and i think this was actually a really good story for the first movie. yeah i mean one thing is like it's 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 hard to relate to it because it's very much of the country that it comes from you know what yeah. i mean like like, this is not an American Hollywood movie. And the funny thing is, so I watched that international version and the storyline, I gave it a three also, but it's way, I think you would like it. If you like the story regular, it's so much better in the international because it's way more fleshed out. There are characters in this version that are like not even either barely in the 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 international cut or like not at all. Like they don't even have any like pine. You're like the editing is so crazy in that in that regular version because it goes it's so focused on getting to the action scene i know the weinsteins they're the ones who edited that one like they're the they're the ones who bought the american rights and like they trimmed it down like crazy so that being said i think the it plays better the international version what i would say is if you've never seen this movie ever i would suggest the international cut first but once you've seen that i'll just watch the other one because no. the one it's trimmed down sure it makes less sense however if you've seen the international and you know everything like like i said about the villain and you get a little you don't need it you could kind of piece it together and just you get through all the fights a lot faster that being said i still gave it a three you know at the end of the day it's about a guy going to get his elephant you know what i mean like and then there's this criminal underworld they eat exotic animals they're selling prostitutes like they're like kidnapping asian women and selling them as prostitutes and stuff you know the typical kind of criminal underworld stuff except the exotic animals that's kind of unique to this movie that's not always like in every movie but it makes you scared for the elephants the whole time once you find out they're eating all this creepy oh, stuff yeah. you know it's <clears> like <throat> oh crap you're right i thought they killed corn i was like he's dead they killed him <laughs> they killed corn and at the end i thought he was dead when that guy chucked him but then he comes up to him he comes yeah. up to him and they're best friends and they're still alive i also thought tony jaw died when he fell through that thing but he's alive but it's like it, that scene 
is way better in the intern in the Thai version because you know how he lands like in the horns and when he was a kid he used to sit in the horns yeah. because the beginning has more of that backstory that scene is more a little more poignant I think it I think the international version's better the US version it gets the job done as far as an action just a martial arts film so a three from you a three for me again if it's your first time seek out the longer one if you've seen it before just stick with the shorter one it's honestly it's it's fine okay overall I gave it a four it's a great film I, I think the storyline is great but I think the action sequence was it's it's what heightens the the movie watchability it's the fight sequence and we're not even talking about the boat chase like there was a boat chase in this movie where it's not as strong as an American movies chase scene with cars and boats like the I mean we always talk about the 007 boat scene like it to me is one of the best boat chase scenes I think we ever seen on the channel but this one had that Roger Moore boat chase scene right it had yeah. like the corniness like the, the guy rode into like a Chinese food thing and he's like huh and yeah. it's just like some weird thing and then he flies through the guy's nuts in the billboard yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty like- much yeah and then <laughs> And then you had the other one that Tony Jaa does the 180 and then he moves the boat and then all of a sudden all the boats fly into the helicopter and it explodes. Yeah, physics. Like, it yeah, is. so to me, like, the, the, the chase scene was okay. But again, you're there just to see him do what he does best. And that's fighting. You're right. That scene, and I totally forgot about it, but I, I did have that scene in, in the American version of him landing on the husk of, mm-hmm. the, of the elephant. And I remember watching it in the beginning. But what was so cool about that scene was that the elephant saved him at the end, regardless right. of the bones or whatever. And I mean, you could do a whole spiritual thing or you could, it could just be, con- uh, what is it, what, consequential, not consequential, what is it called? A uh, coincidence that it was just there but in the long run these two were together like if you really watch the movie and read it or see it or whatever you the the way you watch these movies that elephant was with him as a kid so pretty much he came back to sit to get this elephant and at the end yeah he's bones but he landed on his husk like he did as a kid so to me that was very to me it was memorable because I was just like that's actually pretty cool for it but anyway but I give it a four I think it's a great movie and I'm glad I paid six dollars for it digitally. <laughs> You're going to rewatch it. I promise you. You're going to watch part it again. Two. I brought it. <sighs> I brought part two. Uh, was it one of those Dollar Tree things that we went in? Yeah. And I was like, Protector 2. I was like, it's an action movie and I brought it for a dollar. <laughs> it's not as it's good. Not good. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's not as good. <laughs> yeah. Ong Bak. If I was going to suggest another one, I would say yeah. Ong Bak would be the other one you want to see. That movie's awesome. Good story. Good action. This is, to me, this was his peak. Which is sad because mm. I think he was, he's still alive. I'm not talking about like he's dead. It, he <laughs> is super talented, but he's older. You know what I mean? This is yeah. movie's 18 years old at this point. And I wish he would have cashed, not cashed in, but cashed in more. I do know he had some like, not mental issues, but I think he had some issues with like movie making. I know at one point he literally like went and actually lived in the jungle and kind of went away from movies and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's almost like in real life, he's kind of like the character in this movie where he just wants to kind of be with the nature and all that kind of stuff so you know he always had that kind of thing and then he recent like in the last few years started doing kind of big you know furious seven monster hunter like kind of came back mile 22 and did some did some stuff a little bit later but i wish he did more when he was like in his prime Mm. peak because this guy if he was in some american hollywood action films on one hand, I don't think they would have filmed him correctly, but if they could have got a director who really knew how to, like, if the John Wick guys were making movies when he was in his prime, he would have been the, the biggest, like, martial arts star probably here in, in the U.S. Sure, he can't speak English. He doesn't really speak English, so that would be a hurdle. But Jet Li didn't really speak that good of English, and he had a great career here in the U.S. So, you know, that being said, I gave it a four because the, the story holds it back from being a five, let's be honest. Yeah. Now, as a pure action film, yeah, probably a five, but we're grading it as a complete movie. I'm going to give it a four it is worth it just to watch the action scenes i promise you if you like action movies you'll like the movie if you like martial arts movies you'll love the movie i'm not even lying it's that good like there's no there's no frills it's very simple it's a dude trying to get his elephant and fighting a lot of guys to get to it high body count like a lot of people die a lot of people get injured a lot of bones are broken a lot of blood is shed and I'm here for it. So, um, yeah, it's awesome. It's rated R. Like, you're not getting a soft, you know. It, it, this movie hits. It hits pretty hard, which which yeah. I love. So, I think it's great. I'm glad you liked it. Protective 2. Mm, Ong Bak was cool. That's a cool one. But anyway, what is your overall or your total? My total points is 20 out of a 25. I have the same exact number. 20 out of a 25. 
one of my favorites. This is one of my favorite movies. This is one of the ones I always tell people about. I'm always like, you know, Tony Ja. And and it's so good that it, it, it keeps me a fan of his even now, even though he doesn't really make that much of movies. You know what I mean? But this was so memorable. It was just so memorable. Seeing this in the theater was like, what? who is this guy? Who is this guy? And I love him. Yeah. What's crazy is that um, Mile 22, Peter Berg shot him very well in that movie. He could shoot action his, well. I think yeah, well, yeah, he does. He does agree. But I, I think if they add him into John Wick 5, I mean, that He's would be actually to be pretty an expensive. Expendables 4. Mm. Now, I don't know who's directing that one. I think someone did. I think you told me before. I don't know. You I know. forget who it was, but yeah. I don't know how it's going to turn out. He's supposed to be in Expendables 4. I would have loved to have seen him in The Raid. If he was in The Raid, which is already one of the best action movies, like, period. Oh, okay. It's Scott Waugh. Oh, that guy, he's the very generic director, the guy directing the Expendables he 4. Do? Let's see. Hey, he, he's, he, he, Oh, um, he did Need for Speed. <laughs> need for Speed. Yeah, yeah. He did Need for Speed, which had cool car chases, but it didn't have, like, cool fighting. I don't know. I don't know. How, oh, he did Act, Act of Valor. Valor. Yeah. That was, a, that was a cool movie. The that action in that movie. was good. Okay, so maybe it'll be cool. I don't know. We'll we'll find out. But anyway, if Tony Jaw was in it was in uh was in the raid, it would have been the greatest movie of all time. It would have been the greatest the greatest action film of all time. Anyway, my score's a 20. Your score's a 20. Here's what we got coming up next week. We got a little we're going to Japan for a little movie called The Wolverine. That's not the it's not the martial arts movie, but there's martial arts in it. So it's almost like a double feature next week, The Wolverine, and then we got this Alex. This one's going to be good cuz we got mm. two of our favorite guys. We got your main man from Lethal Weapon 4, Jet Li. We got my main man from a bunch of crap, Jason <laughs> Statham. And they're meeting up for a little movie called War. So we're going to be watching. I, I never seen that. Oh, never seen War? Okay. Mm-hmm. So we get the Jason Statham versus Jet Li for War. I haven't seen this since like. 2000, whenever it came out, when I was in high school, that's when I saw it. So it's been a long time. I'm pretty excited. I'm not going to lie. Your boy, my boy, teaming up for a, uh, for a <laughs> fighting movie. But what can go wrong? We'll find yeah, out. 2007. Okay, I was 20. I was out of high school. I haven't seen it since I was 20 years old. So a lot has changed. My taste has changed, but I remember liking it then. It might be horrible. We're going to find out next weekend. We're going to let you guys know. Yeah, I mean, it's my first time watching. It's going to be actually pretty fun. Well, with that said, guys, if you want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything action movie, guys, head over to YouTube.com slash Geeks and Flicks for the video version of the podcast. If you guys want to follow us on our Instagram account, check out Action Movie Guys Podcast. Follow us if you have not followed us yet. Other than that, he is your host, Nate from Netflix Reviews. I'm his co-host, Alice Figueroa. Be awesome to each other and geek out. Geek out.